Hello, I'm Bob Rosinski, your host and creator of Behind the Lens. I love cameras and lenses, old, new, film, digital, stills and motion picture. I like learning about the equipment photographers and filmmakers use to create their work, no matter how modest or ambitious. Though ultimately hardware and software are merely tools, they simply enable creators to create. Behind the Lens is a show about the creative process and the practitioners of visual storytelling. On occasion, Behind the Lens will feature segments highlighting technical aspects of photography and filmmaking. I will do my best to ensure that the delivery is entertaining and informative. Today, I'm excited to introduce Alison Randomsky, a brilliant filmmaker whose work is noted for its rich visual imagery, novel storytelling, and energy. And with that, let's begin. Hello, Allison. Hello, Bob. I'm really happy you could appear on the show today. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, you're quite welcome. <laughs> so, Allison Radomsky, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure. So, I am... Um an independent filmmaker, mm -hmm. um, photographer, and videographer. I uh, write and direct only short films so far, um, some narrative and some more experimental in nature, which sort of cast off the burdens of narrative requirements. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I lived in Atlanta for several years, um, and I just recently moved to the Longmont area. Um, and yeah, I, my filmmaking, um, I think it's extra fun because I like to work with 16 millimeter and Super 8 film. And so um, a lot of my, I'm <laughs> sorry, I keep doing a patch. No, 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 it's fine. Just, just go with it. I don't care about jump cuts. Well, uh, yeah, I, and I like to use a Super 8 and 16 millimeter film just because I love the way it handles light and color. And I also love to uh, distort film mm -hmm, too, using mm -hmm. different kind of analog distortion methods. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's me, that's what I do. Well, we'll be looking at some of your films, and what immediately caught my eye was your uh, willingness to experiment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, actually, just yesterday I was watching a, a documentary about Orson Welles, and he was talking about, oh, and I can't remember the phrase he used, but divine accidents, how much oh, filmmaking sure. is a divine sure. accident, and I like to be open to the things that happen and the kind of contributions that other people make that you won't be able to predict necessarily. Sure. Um, yeah, that's, I, I like to embrace that. Well, I like the uh, way that your Super 8 films have a lot of texture and a lot of abstraction and a lot of drips and scratches, yeah. very textural. Yeah, yeah, so um, the one you're referring to, How to Behave at a Party, um, that was some footage that I made when actually just hanging out with some friends, having a small gathering, mm -hmm. and then I took the Super 8 film cartridge cartridges after we shot, and I soaked them in different substances, including like, I think I know that I definitely had beer and wine. Beer and uh, wine. There was also, I got some like Epsom salts and some of those like like the gel silica mm -hmm. packets and mm -hmm. emptied them in there and you just kind of put it in a Tupperware, shake it around and let it soak for like weeks. And then you so do it... you do this in a dark room? No, you don't have to necessarily because, um, you know, with Super 8 film, it's in its own little sure. plastic cartridge. So you so leave you... it in the cartridge and you drop the cartridge yes. into whatever... Some kind of vessel. Mixture. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. whatever mixture you want. And then um, that will lead to all kinds of cool scratches and textures, and that's what I think is really fun. So do you let the film dry before you take it to the lab? Yeah, so actually <laughs> there are a lot of things in there. I do let it dry, mm -hmm. um, and especially in sunlight because heat will continue to do mm -hmm. things to mm -hmm. the, the chemical distortions mm -hmm. that you're trying to create. But also um, when you're doing that type of film distortion, you really do have to process the film yourself because labs don't want you no. to like sully their chemicals that they're using for other people's work. Well, that's a that's a good point. Yeah. So you you're, you're developing your film. Mm -hmm. Get yep. out of here. Yeah, I'm developing my film. Wow, it's the awesome. color film too. Yeah, yeah, not Get... not 16 millimeter, but for Super 8. And if you're an especially well, I'm going to have to reevaluate my opinion. So you won't do 16, but you'll do Super 8. Well, it's only ah. because I don't have a big enough tank for 16. Millimeter. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, it's uh, fun. We have a, a row of eight millimeter film, which mm -hmm. is, can you, you want to grab oh, yeah, that and sure. just show people what? <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, uh, I believe this is 25 feet of Super 8 film. But uh, what I do is I go and then I do, do go into a dark room. 
um, take the film out of its canister and then jam it in kind of a smaller like Patterson tank yeah. that you can buy for yeah. still photography processing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, because it's all jammed in there and there's too much film to fit, the chemicals are not going to hit evenly. And that's going to lead to even more fun distortion in there. So. so I'd imagine you're pretty excited to get the film back from the lab and to screen it. Mm -hmm. uh, are you pleasantly surprised or moderately surprised or sometimes disappointed? Yeah, or, or, I think, you know, it's a mix. You never know. See. That's the thing that's you have to take into account when you're doing experimental work with film is sometimes you will do yeah. an experiment and be like, oh, well, this is way too dark or yeah. this isn't quite right. Um, so sometimes there are disappointments, but it's all part of the process, and that's what makes it fun. Let me just show people out there, this is... This is actually 8 millimeter film. It was the precursor of Super 8. And when my first filmmaking class, I had to learn how to edit this stuff by hand. Mm -hmm. Spaghetti. Yeah. So you're not editing this. No, no. I don't do analog editing, although I think it would be really fun to. You can get, um, after you process your film, you send it to a lab and they digitize it and put the MP4 on a hard drive. And then mm. you can bring it into something like Premiere Pro. Oh, great. And uh, do editing on your computer, which is a lot great. easier. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, so, um, you've been told that your filmmaking has a sense of hazard to it. Yeah. Well, let's, let's dig into that a bit. Yeah, uh, that was, um, a friend of mine who does sound work mm -hmm. uh, in the Twin Cities who made that comment after watching some of my work. But, um, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that I choose to work with a smaller crew, like mm -hmm. it's usually like six people total. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you're, you're never really going to have quite a as polished of a look as if you had more to it. And a sure. lot of, uh, we often like shoot on locations where you don't have permits. And so that's sure. found lighting. And so that's going to be. So the hazard of not having a permit, the hazard yeah. of just sort well, of, let's go out there, run and gun. Mm -hmm. But you do have a story concept. It's yeah, well, no, but also too, I often, uh, I think I make stories about characters who are themselves kind of on the brink of falling apart. Oh. So you have this kind of chaotic a uh, movie and a chaotic person who's kind of disintegrating in their own oh, way. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think that it fits well with the types of narratives and the types of emotions that I gravitate toward. So it makes sense that you would like John Cassavetes' films. because yeah. he, he, But he does that in a very long Yeah, format. John Cassavetes shot so much film for his movies and would spend, I think he took a lot of joy in the editing process and creating like almost different versions of uh -huh. movies that he made. Uh -huh. um, but he worked with a small group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you that's did. so I understand mm -hmm. where that impulse comes from. Yeah. Um, well, uh, another thing that has intrigued me about your work is the idea of micro short yeah. storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that. Let's see. I think I first started dabbling in the well. First of all, a micro short would be a short film that's like under one minute, under two minutes. So okay. it's like extremely, extremely short for those who might not be familiar with that term. Um, and I participated in Atlanta. Kodak uh, sponsors a 100 feet of film contest where oh. you get 100 feet of film and you have to make something with it. And then everyone, we have screening and everyone gets shown. Um, but it really made me think more about what you can do with just a very small amount of footage and how you have to really be so careful with the images that you choose and trying to pick ones that convey as much as possible, evoke as much as possible. Um, how do you... Uh, generate a lot of feeling with not a lot of footage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fun challenge. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see what happens when you take disparate images that you wouldn't think could go together and mm -hmm. then they suddenly make something when they are put together. So would that be like mixing vinegar with baking soda and then soaking a, 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 yeah. a cartridge in there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you tried that? I actually, and baking soda? I have not tried that. I've tried yeah. other kind of sizzly elements mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. when you use gel silica and you mix it with like beer that kind of has like a crackle <laughs> to it but not nothing quite as I don't know. So do you like ale, lager, pilsner? I think uh, I've just used Miller High Life. Oh, Usually okay. I use a cheap beer that's just in the fridge. Um, okay, well, that's the champagne of bottled beers. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. okay. Uh, well, I'd like to look at some of your films with you. Sure. And uh, let me see. The first one I'd like to look at would be How to Behave at a Party. Sure, we can do that. <sighs> How should I stand? What should I do with my hands? Am I 
doing this right? Do I look like a weirdo? That's okay, just watch the normal people and just do what they do. Oh shit, are they looking at me too? Have a drink, have a drink. It's really not that hard to be part of a group. You can sit, you can speak. The, the texture in this is just incredible. Yeah, it's so fun. And, and the funky colors. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, and some you know, of the color stuff does come from like post-production too. Like I definitely did work to make the colors a little more saturated. And because too, some of this film turned out really dark because mm -hmm. uh, it just didn't get enough chemicals when it was in this little tiny tank. Mm -hmm. So you have to do work to maybe bring out the images a little bit more. So not all of the distortions are purely analog, mm -hmm. but certainly all the cracks and that texture. Um, well, it's nice that you've found a hybrid workflow. Yeah. I think that's fun. So you get the best of analog and digital. Exactly, the ease of digital. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of cuts yeah. in, in this piece particularly. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, with this, I didn't really have a plan for the footage when I shot it. It was more that I got it back from the lab, and these scans, and I was like, oh, I have to do something with this because I think it's just fun. Uh -huh. And I think I wanted to get all of my favorite shots in there, and that's yeah. why there's a lot of cutting. Can we look at the big oak tree? Sure, yeah, we'll look at a clip from that. This yeah, is yeah. my uh, first foray into music videos, which I'm so excited to be doing. And this, uh, I believe this music video will be completed and released um, in mid-January. Okay. Based inks, oh. India ink, and uh -huh. then I'm using Sharpie. And then it's fun if you put kind of um, you get like a clear glue, kind of like a glitter glue. Oh, but and of course. And then, the, but that'll like when you like drip the paint on it, it'll like yeah. move around to get get around the yeah. paint, so it'll have these kind of weird yeah. swirly effects. Yeah. Um, so I use for this music video, I use that painted leader, mm -hmm. and then um, some video footage that I shot with an old camcorder, and then I uh, used. Um, other people's home movies that are available for free through the ah. Prelinger archive, which is this great collection of other people's like oh, Bellinger. Prelinger. Prelinger. Yeah, so it's um if you go to uh, oh my gosh it's archive.org. Okay, sure. And uh, Rick Prelinger, who is a filmmaker and an archivist and a mm -hmm. professor, um, I think since the '80s has been pointed at this collection of uh, I think it's a lot of home movies and then there are some kind of uh, educational films mm -hmm. from the '50s that are mm -hmm. in it. Um, but it's free to access, and you can use it if you like. Oh, cool. So Um, so the paint colors come from painted leader, so you just like clear 16 millimeter that you can color on the sharpies or use India ink or whatever. So to clarify leader for people that aren't right. film savvy, okay, this is a leader. 
it's white. Oftentimes it's clear. Yeah, white or clear. So you'll, you'll, you'll paint or draw on either or? I've only used clear so far. Cause uh. the... been really interesting hearing all of I don't like that word. <laughs> so. It's been great hearing about your process, mm -hmm. getting a little bit of a sense of what's going on behind the eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is the gray matter telling the artist to do? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just great that you're able to pick up film and treat it as a canvas almost. And I, it is kind of cliche, but seriously, you're, you're applying pigment, yeah. you're applying texture, you're applying line. Mm -hmm. It's 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 very cool, and uh, I look forward to seeing the two films that will be released later, mm -hmm. and I'm sure people uh, watching this will love are as intrigued with the uh, short clips that we've watched as I am. So thank you, Allison. I really appreciate your coming in to talk with me. Thank you for having me, Bob. Well, you're quite welcome. All right. <laughs> so on. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Behind the Lens. Please keep an eye out for the next episode, and until then, so long.